What's going on guys, Aussie here and welcome back to a brand new video. So today we have the 90 overall flashback card Miller Tower and I tell you what, he looks absolutely ridiculous. 90 pace, 91 physical, 91 defending, 85 dribbling and 82 passing. Now, for me personally, I believe his dribbling is high enough, I believe his passing is high enough. So the one I want to improve is obviously just his pace, defending and physical. Now he is 6 foot 1, which is an inch below the like the meta height that I usually go for. I usually go for 6 foot 2, slash 6 foot 4 in between that little range for a centre back. But 6 foot 1, 1 inch is not going to make a difference. The medium high work rates are the perfect defensive work rates. 2 star skill moves, I don't do skill moves with my centre backs. He has got a 2 star weak foot though, and that is something I don't like to see because... I'm not going to feel comfortable when turning onto the left foot and actually switching a ball with it because sometimes it could, go, it could go literally God knows where, but other times it will be accurate. Now, he is on a anchor chem style. He is on 10 chem. Bear in mind, this card is actually going for 500k right now. Me, I managed to do it for, I believe it was 75k with like untradeables and stuff. So it's quite cheap, obviously, but I had to use quite high rated. Now he has got 93 acceleration and 96 sprint speed. And you could obviously argue that he could be one of the fastest center backs in this game with that 99 aggression that you are seeing on the other side. Shooting wise, we're not going to get into shooting because he can't shoot to save his life. It's clear of day. 73 vision, 89 crossing, 85 short passing, 84 long passing and 74 curve. Now, passing wise, he will be like very good on passing with his right foot. But I'm always going to be looking at that two star weak foot to think to myself, is it going to be consistent at switching the ball? Now, one thing I will be interesting to see is can he overtop the ball from the center back position all the way down to the wing position? So we'll see if that works out today. He has got 82 agility, 80 balance, 96 reactions, 85 ball control, 83 dribbling, and 88 composure. If 82 agility is not enough, which for me personally, because I don't really dribble much with my center backs, it will be enough. But if you use your center backs a lot just to do your little twists and turns, then is 82 agility going to be enough? For me personally, I don't believe so. And I feel like Adair Militao will be one of those players that will be very calm and composed on the ball, take a very good touch. But when it comes down to doing the little twists and turns, I doubt he's going to be able to do it. He has got 97 interception, 96 heading accuracy, 99 defensive awareness, 99 standing tackle and 99 sliding tackle. It's always nice to see when there's a few 99s, especially in the defensive stat. Now, he's going to put in a very good tackle. He's going to be very, very solid with it as well. Hopefully winning 10 out of 10 chances. Defensive awareness, he will be man marking such pass kind of passing lanes as well. Interceptions is something I'm going to love to see because he has that high reactions, which means if someone RBAs the ball go, like near him, he will actually react fast enough to intercept it with that 97 interceptions as well. He has got the 99 jumping, 96 heading accuracy, 6 for 1. I would say he'll be out headering. Probably six foot three and below, maybe pushing six foot four if we're lucky. He has got 98 stamina, which he doesn't need as especially a centre back, but it's always nice to have, I guess. He has got 91 strength, which means bodying the meta players, for example, Neymar and Bappe, I don't know, Daniel James, probably not Triore because he has 99 strength on the team of the season. But bodying them kind of players should be not a problem at all. Now, the 99 aggression, as I said, won't be making him faster, but at the same time, he'll win way more 50-50s. Now, today I have linked him up with Rio Ferdinand, Testegen, and Mendy. I've also got the likes of Bakayoko, uh, Trent, and Morris in the team. It doesn't matter what formation I'll be using him, as long as the forward at the back, and it is, it's going to be the 4-4-2. So let's get straight into these games. So the first thing we always start off with is just check how agile he is on the ball. Yeah, he seems very nice, and he is keeping the ball fairly close to his feet. But he doesn't look, you know, agile as hell, like a Parva or Carlos did. We're going to make a run, track the run, there you go, read the passing lane. One thing I did actually see there was he used a lot of pace there, and he literally, like... I didn't, I, I mean, let's do it. I didn't expect him to get there that fast. I thought he was going to be one of those ones where he just ran onto it. But apparently he instantly like glitched into the spot and it got it instantly. That was like crazy to see. Going to press him a little bit. No turn there. So just by moving with him right now, I can already tell. Oh, that's a really, really good tackle. Oh my God, that's a very bad touch from Bakayoku. But we move at the end of the day. But yeah, that was like really good acceleration from him. I'm actually losing control of him sometimes because he is super, super fast. And I can already tell that he he feels better when, you know, transi transitioning from left to right. He feels better than Carlos. And that's like a big, big thing for me. Little press there. Oh, he didn't come out with the ball there. Oh my God, I don't know why my opponent did not shoot that. But we move at the end of the day. Apparently, we don't concede off that. And he did actually leave the ball behind after doing the standing tackle. And that's always going to be annoying. But I believe that's one of those ones where... I believe that's one of those ones where it's, you know, it's like one in a few times. That's a really good tackle from him as well. 
Nice. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. That's the second time that's happened. That's always going to be annoying. Do I believe that's EA just, you know, doing what they do best, pretty much screwing defenders? Not really, because I never really had that problem with Carlos. I didn't have a problem with, like, with, like you know, with Rio or anything like that. And the fact that he's done it twice in the first, like, 20 minutes is always going to be an issue. So we are going to pass the Militao here. We are going to use his weak foot just to switch the ball there. That's very, very accurate. And the power was literally perfect. But it was a really bad header from St. Max. We're going to try again. Weaker foot all the way over there. It's a perfect pass. It looks like there's not going to be that much problems with the weaker foot. And that's what I'm hoping for. I want that consistency. So we have got a corner here. Yeah, he's got the jumping. Yes, he's got the heading accuracy. The height is not the greatest, but it is actually going to take it early. Can he out jump the player? That is super unfortunate that he did actually take it early and I took a bit too long. But at the same time, he did actually challenge, but it wasn't one of those ones where he could climb over the player. Dear Militao, just be on that guy. There you go. That aggression coming into play. The strength even coming into play there and making him do a very, really, really solid tackle. Little over top through ball with the left foot. Can it be perfect? Ah, if a Marvy was a tiny, tiny bit faster, that ball would have been pinpoint. But I'm not going to take any credit away from Militao there. It was a beautiful ball. Dear Militao going for the tackle. There you go. He comes out of it as well. One thing I wasn't confident about there was, yes, he got the interception. It was a really nice interception as well. But the problem with it was he was getting pressured straight after. And I wanted to see if he kept calm, he kept composed, and he obviously came out with the ball. That's a really good pass as well because that could have got intercepted. Come on on that. Look at the pressure. Look at the strength. Look at the aggression. Oh, my God, man. He's so, so fast to be on the player. And he is definitely a player, a centre-back, sorry, that can actually press really, really well. Press that. There you go. Don't ask me why he was so high up because I don't really know why. But at the same time, it was one of those situations where press the player into a mistake. Adair Militao is going to be there. So it is time to do another corner. The first corner was not the greatest. So we are going to give this one a go. See if he wins this header. It is against Sergio Ramos. He has leaped up. He has won the header. I believe it is another corner. Yes, it is. So let's try again. Hopefully it is another good delivery. Militao, come on. That's good. That's good. No, he actually got outheaded by Sergio Ramos. It's always going to be a letdown when uh, he gets outheaded. But it's one of those situations where I'd rather do a header with probably like a Van Dyke, a person that's six foot three or six foot four, rather than Militao, you know? Little double press between Ade Militao and Rio Ferdinand. He does intercept it, but I then I obviously decide, you know, let's turn back into him like, a, like an idiot pretty much. But it was a really good pressure game from him. Militao. I do see that through ball, to be fair. Can he play that ball? Oh, my. Now, the keeper is going to get there, and that usually does happen. But I tell you what, that is an unbelievable ball. So, we have got another corner here, and let's see what Dan Militao does on this one. Oh, he's dropped, his, uh, he's dropped the player that he's on. He has got a free header, and he still loses it. That's always going to be annoying, especially from a player that has that jumping, that heading accuracy. He is six foot one. I do understand he's not going to be out heading like people like Van Dyke and stuff. But come on, he needs to be a bit more aggressive there. Little press with Rio. He'll pass the Ribery. Then I press with a Dan Militao because do you see how fast the Dan Militao is? Ribery has no time to react. My opponent has no time to react. So there is no way in hell a Dan Militao doesn't get to that ball. Adair Militao on the edge of the box. Little Felix. Okay. Maybe a bit too ambitious there. Let's actually wait until he gets up. Come on. You're not done here yet. You're not done here yet. Little ball roll. Little twist and turns. Fake shot. Going the same way. Ball roll. We're actually going to go for Finne. No one two there. I honestly committed a bit too far there. And I actually panicked a little bit. But then I saw Adair Militao catching up. And I was like, ah, his karma's composed. He goes in with a strong tackle. And it's an easy tackle for him. So it is time to review him. And let me say, this card is absolutely broken. Pace, aggression, strength. He's got the defensive stats. He's pretty much got everything in the locker. But there is one thing I did not like about him. And I will tell you guys in a minute. But let's get into the stats once again. Six foot one, non-issue at all. Yes, he didn't outhead a players like Van Dyke and stuff. But he will outhead a players like Neymar. Adama Traore, James, you know, all these like 5 for 8, 5 for 9 kind of meta players. The medium high work rate was the perfect defensive work rate. He didn't go too far up and he didn't leave space in behind. The two star skill moves, I don't do skill moves. The two star weak foot wasn't an issue at all, but it, there is one thing I can say don't 100% believe in it because in the 90th minute, we all know what happened in this game. 
some things don't go your way some things turns into turns into bs if you want to call it and all of a sudden you could pass it 20 times with a day miller tower probably at the 30th or 60th minute but as soon as it comes down to that 90th minute all of a sudden the day miller tower can't pass with that weaker foot so be careful with it i wouldn't 100 percent believe in it but it was consistent for me that is something i can say pace wise he's unbelievable at like pressing the player into mistakes and that is something i absolutely loved about him shooting we had a finesse show with him Come on now, it wasn't going to go in, let's all be fair. Passing wise, he is unbelievable. Passing the overtops down the wings, everything pretty much worked with both feet, and that was something I was impressed about. Dribbling, he feels good on the ball. He doesn't feel insane. He doesn't feel as good as, like, I believe it's Carlos or Aparva on the ball. But he is a really, really calm and composed player, and he does take a really good touch. Now, defensive stats interceptions now there was times that he did do a really good interception and there was other times where the ball would bounce off his feet sometimes and that is towards his 85 ball control if he had like 90 plus the ball would not bounce off his foot as much the ball would come towards his feet he'll get it he'll take a really good touch pass away but because he has a low if you want to call it ball control it bounces off his feet most of the time and then goes back towards the player and that is how i conceded i believe one or two goals and that was always going to be annoying but you just have to game at like be at the right place and if you don't the ball will bounce off his feet now defensive awareness he was at the right place at the right time in most occasions as i said there was other occasions where the ball would come towards him he wouldn't be at the right place it would bounce off his feet go towards the opponent standing tackling was actually really really good there was some situations where he did it and then he didn't follow through and then all of a sudden the other guy has the ball they score off it bit annoying but it's fifa 20 at the, at, at the end of the day nothing is consistent in this game that's something you have to remember and i would say he got the ball nine times out of ten when stand ta standing tackling jumping wise it was really good as i said against you know the meta players but if you're playing against like virgil van dyke and stuff virgil van dyke and stuff he's never gonna outhead them Stamina, he did last about the whole 90 minutes. Strength. Now, he hasn't actually got a bulky bully in game, but that was something I expected. I used his gold card. I never used his Champions League card, but I used his gold card, and he he still got into a lot of like contact situations, and I believe that's more towards his aggression than anything, where he wants to fight for the ball. He wants the ball more than my opponent, and he tries to get into those you know contact situations, and pretty much, I would say he won every single one. Now, we have to give him a rating out of 10. He's a 10 out of 10, without a doubt, let's all be fair. But is he better than Carlos? And that is a lot of that is a question everyone will be asking in this comment section. Is he better than Carlos? No. Is he better than Boateng? Yes. I believe that Militao could potentially be third or fourth in my best centre backs in this game. This card is broken. And do I suggest getting it? 100%. But if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, and for now. Peace.